Hello, I'm Noodle, and in today's guide, I'm not going to show you how to do anything. My my mum is. Lies. Well, yeah. you're gonna voice it, and I'm <laughs> gonna show them with gameplay. Yeah. So, there you go. Go. Hello, everybody. I'm Mother Noodle. Nice to be here with you all. In today's guide, we'll show you how to set default behaviors for your ships. We'll explain what each default behavior does, and because you can no longer create an auto trader in the way my son showed in his auto trading guide, we'll start by showing you how to set one up again. But first we want to thank you all for the awesome feedback and comments. Also for being patient with us over the Christmas holidays and the start of the new year. Hope you had a good one. Oh, by the way, we have a Discord channel which you can find the link to in the description below should you fancy a chat. So, let's get on with it. To create an auto trader, you now have to set one up through the default behaviour section of the ship you want to set as an auto trader. You can do this by clicking on the ship, then clicking on the information tab on the left, and then clicking on the behaviour tab. Next, you go down to the default behaviour section and click on the currently set default behaviour to change it. Then click on auto trade. The skill star level of the NPC that is captain in the ship actually matters now, so you will need a three star captain in order to choose the auto trade option. If the skill level of the captain is lower than three stars, the auto trade option will be greyed out. Once you've selected auto trade, you can tell it which ways it is allowed to trade by clicking on add ways, then clicking on the ways you want it to trade. Once you've done this, decide how many jumps away from the ship's current sector is allowed to buy and sell the ways you want it to auto trade, then click confirm. This is now the only way to create an auto trader in X4. Right, next we'll show you every default behaviour available and explain what they all do. Patrol. This default behaviour will make your ship patrol a sector of your choosing. To choose the sector that the ship is already in, click on the area to patrol box, then click on OK. To make the ship patrol in a different sector, you have to go and click within the sector you want it to patrol and then click OK. Once you're happy with what you've set, click confirm and the ship will patrol the sector you choose. I believe it will now attack any hostiles it comes across as well as scan for illegal goods on ships. I think. Or he thinks. We think. Whatever. Anyway, my son does not have much experience with the patrol option, so if you missed any for now or got something wrong, please let him know in the comments section below the video. The next option is protect position. This behaviour will make the ship protect a specific area of a sector from any hostiles. To decide which area it should protect, click on the area to protect box, then click on the part of the sector you want the ship to protect, then click confirm. The next option is protect ship. This will make the ship follow another ship of your choosing and attack anything that attacks a protected ship. Cool. To decide which ship it should protect, click on the, ne on the box next to the ship to protect, then right click on the ship you want it to protect from the list given or on the map, then click confirm. The next option is protect station. This does the exact same thing that a protect ship option does and is set up in the exact same way, except that it's for protecting a station rather than a ship. Duh. Before I go on, I want to mention that these four combat based behaviours are currently quite buggy and don't really work that well. My son has had ships follow Xenon ships into their territory whilst trying to attack them, which resulted in his ships being obliterated. <laughs> You sounded so jordy. <laughs> the next default behaviour down is the auto mine option. I'm skipping this one as my son already explained what it does in his mining guide. So next is the dock and wait option. This will make the ship dock and await further instructions after it's completed any orders you've given it. To decide which station the ship should dock at and wait at, click on the destination box, then right click on a station from the list or on a station on the map and click select then click confirm once you are happy with your selection. The next default behaviour is explore. This option will make the ship map out a sector for you, but it does this incredibly slowly in the current build of the game. To decide which sector you want the ship to map out for you, click on the area to explore box, then click on the sector you want explored and click OK. Then click confirm, the ship will now map out the sector for you. The next default behaviour is follow ship. Quite simply, this will make the ship follow another one. You can decide which one it should follow in the same way you decide which ship it should protect. Please rewind should you need a reminder of that process. Ding ding. Next is the fly to object option. This will make the ship fly to any stationary object that is available to select on the map. Once again, do this by clicking on the destination box, then right clicking on any stationary object of your choosing from either the list or the map and clicking on select. Then click on confirm to set the default behavior. Next is the fly and wait option. This will make your ship fly to any location in the sector and wait further instruction. 
Select the destination in the same way we just showed you except this time you choose any location you want within any sector. The next default behaviour is hold position. This will tell the ship to stay where it is after it's completed all the tasks you've given it. You can also decide if the ship should stay docked if the last task you gave it ended with it being docked at a station and whether to hold fire so that if it ended its last task somewhere in space it doesn't fire at hostiles and attract their attention. The next option is revisit known stations. This default behaviour will make the ship revisit every known station over and over again to update what those stations are selling and buying, which is handy if you don't have satellites dotted around to do that for you. To decide which sector the ship should do this in, click on the box next to space, then click within the sector that you want the ship to revisit stations in. Click on OK, then confirm. The next option, find build tasks, is something my son has never used before, but from what he has gathered, it is a default behaviour that you can set for a construction ship. He believes this will make the construction ship look for, look for stations that need a station builder and then go work on them. Although he has read that it only does this for your own stations. Who knows? The next default behaviour that he has never used before is the distribute ways behaviour. He has read up a little bit about it and it looks like this will make the ship move ways between your stations. If so, you can tell the ship which ways it is allowed to trade between your stations by clicking on add ways, then selecting the ways it can move between your stations and then clicking on confirm. If anybody has further information about this, please do share in comments. The next option is plunder. Arr. This will supposedly make the ship behave like any other NPC pirate in the sector you tell it to, or towards an NPC station. My son has tried using this default behaviour with transport ships and combat ships, but nothing ever seemed to happen. From what he's read, it's supposed to make your ship tell other NPC ships or stations to drop their cargo and then pick up as much of that cargo as it can. The next default behaviour you can see in my son's game is Tater Trade. This option is not in the base game, but we thought we should point it out here as it's a mod that my son is using in his game. The mod does what Auto Trader does, but better and with more options. We'll link to it below for anybody interested. This concludes my son's guide on ship default behaviours and the updated information on how to create an auto trader. Thank you all again for being patient, sticking with us and being great. If you all enjoyed this guide or found it helpful, please hit the like button for more and share this video. If you fancy a chat about this or any of our other videos, don't forget you can find us on Discord. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already and click that bell button to be notified whenever we release a new video. And as always, we'll see you in the next one. Bye! I was well excited. <laughs> that was awesome. That would have taken me like two hours. That was great.